and oh. to get into it. It's the post-mortem. It is the... Um, we have to get into this North London derby absolute horror show. And if you just look at the performance, um, I don't think it was a complete horror show, but we're just such a blunt knife. Like... We're trying to go in uh, and, and cut our steak with a spoon, pretty much. That's what it feels like at the moment. And um, I, I saw a lot of similarities to, to the Tottenham Hots to the game at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium last year, particularly in the opening 20 minutes, half an hour. Like, if you put those goals aside, where where we conceded from those set pieces, we pressed high up the pitch. We won it back in good areas. We just couldn't hurt Arsenal for love nor money. We're swinging crosses into the box uh, for no one. And it's just really frustrating to watch because it gives you this like a bit of a full sense of security where, you know, it looks like we're playing well and it looks like we're really hurting Arsenal or on the brink of hurting Arsenal. But everything just fails to materialise. Yeah, it's ultimately such a frustrating game. I think there were a lot of similarities to this game to last year. Obviously, the big difference is we went 3-0 down going into the uh, first half, which is a positive. But... Um, <laughs> but it's so frustrating the way we press we came out with looked like serious intent we're, we're pressing them in their final third we're getting a lot of joy we're winning the ball back in such good positions um, we're, we're looking like there could be really promising openings and then we just don't take that final step of creating that really good quality or opportunity. We won the ball back in so many good areas and we won the ball back in so, um, in so many chances to open up Arsenal. But we just weren't able to create anything. I've got some screenshots here of how many times we were able to win the ball back and the, 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 the openings we created against Arsenal, but we weren't actually able to create a good um opportunity from these openings and it yeah, bring on the first one here so we've we um not this one then one after yeah this one so bring on this one uh decky find we win the ball back off Jorginho high up the pitch decky finds himself in a really promising area he has two options either cut inside and shoot which is maybe a bit more difficult or could he slide in brennan johnson now on the right hand side he decides to go for maybe the more difficult one which is um cutting inside and shoot and unfortunately his shot gets blocked by uh um william saliba there's then, um, we do really well to hit the ball high up um, off, uh, off uh, Ben White. Ben White's pass is intercepted by Son. It falls to Dom Solanke um, in, in, this, in what was a really promising position here from Dom, Dom Solanke to win the ball off. Uh, a ball, yeah, bring on the, bring on the next one. Um, and you can see it's fallen to him. He's got so much space there. Look, I think he's almost got too much space. I think the mistake Solanke makes here is instead of letting the ball run across his body to get the shot off, he takes a touch, and that touch allows William Saliba to get close to him. And you can see in the next screenshot, that's when he had space, and this is when um, uh, he actually attempts a shot. Look how much Saliba's the space is closed down. But that's a really good opportunity if... Uh, if for for Spurs to how do we not make an opportunity from that situation? He could have even found Brennan Johnson now on the right hand side, who's completely free. It's criminal. He could have passed it to him. Instead, he actually doesn't even attempt a shot. He tries to cut inside Saliba for some reason and doesn't attempt the shot. And uh, that was really disappointing. And again, 26 minutes in, we we, we nick the ball off Thomas Partey, really promising position. And um, and again, w look at this. We win the ball. It falls to Dejan Kulusevski, and. If you go to the next shot, this is when we have... If you actually look at that, there's three Arsenal defenders and there's five Spurs attackers. So, again, how do we not make an opportunity from this kind of opening? Um, instead, Decky, I think, was a bit guilty of, um, of uh, d dallying on the ball a bit and um, he, Saliba gets to challenge in and, and Arsenal win the ball back. But these opportunities in the first 25 minutes we had to make a good quality chance and this is what Ange was talking about um in his post-match um interview P he was talking about how we found ourselves in a lot of good positions and we didn't create chances from them and the these are um positions where most if you're a good quality if you're a top team you're ruthless in those situations. No, you make a good quality chance. You make a good quality opening. You make the keeper make a good save. You do something um, to make the most out of those situations because, look, don't get, don't get it twisted. The fact that we've created those openings, are they, 
a lot of teams, I know a few teams this season have done that against Arsenal, but we've done that a few times in the opening um, 35, 25 or opening half an hour. And that's a lot to do with how Andrews coach the team into pressing, getting close to the opposition, getting in their faces, winning the ball back. And then once they get in that position, it's on the player's individual ability to create those chances and they just weren't able to do it. And that was really, really frustrating. And um, I think Ange will be... Um, you know, tearing his hair out, the fact that we've created those openings and haven't created a good opportunity from any of them. And that was really frustrating. We did create a couple of chances. Obviously, Deki had a shot early on, which Rea saved. And then I think there was a cross from Deki, which flick was flicked on by Brennan Johnson, and uh, Rea had to make another save. So we did force a couple of saves out of Rea. But from those openings, there should have been at least a goal out of one of them. And that was really frustrating. Yeah. But I'm looking at it and I'm thinking are these signings in the forward line, are they good enough to keep Ange in his job? Because it's a results-driven business. Brennan Johnson is consistently playing poor. The only good game he has had is, is off the bench against Newcastle. The three games that he started, in my opinion, have been shocking. Wilson Oderbear has brought it, been brought in as a 19-year-old and he's shown flashes, but is he ready to come in and make a real difference right now? I question that. Solanke has played two games, so I don't want to get on his back too much, but um, you know he's had chances to, to win, win games for us and he hasn't done that so um and in Kung Min Son you know I love the guy to bits and I think he's been one of the best players in Spurs's uh, Premier League history but is he playing in the right position to get the best out of him uh, that's also a big question in this Ange Postecoglou system so do we have the right players in this forward line to fulfill the needs that Ange wants and that's a big question mark that was obviously the biggest worry he didn't even mention Timo Werner and I think enough said about yeah, that one but hell. um uh I think there's that's definitely the jury's out on that. The jury is very much out on that. I did think, you know, getting Solanke into the team would make would make a difference and would give us more of a focal point. I do think we've looked better with him in the team, and I think he did some really good stuff in the build up like, up against the two Arsenal centre backs. And you've got to remember, this is his second game, his home debut. You know, it doesn't get much tougher than facing Saliba and Gabriel, and he didn't get much joy. The joy he did get was mostly in the build up. Um, phases in the in the game when it came to crosses in the box first of all he was feeding off absolute scraps because the delivery um, nine times out of ten was shocking a couple of times they were able to find him um, he did really well to ma manufacture a, a chance out of the looping header I thought which was if he would have scored that it would have been a f phenomenal header I think we will see it in time he will start to score goals but you know it's only a second game I do think he'll make a big difference but I have to say Brennan Johnson yesterday how many times he had an opportunity one-on-one -on -one with Timber to take him on really take the game to him force an opportunity and he was on a yellow card and he was on a yellow card but time and again he just didn't commit him he didn't I mean, look you got to give Timber some credit because I thought he defended very well throughout the game and kept and when, when Johnson had he must have had about five or six one-on-one -on -one opportunities to run at him and each time either the cross was blocked or he um, or he went backwards he wasn't able to do anything yesterday to ask different questions to Timber he did the same thing every time which was get the ball run down the line and have his cross blocked the one time he did cut inside he had a shot on his left foot which was a really weak effort which uh, Ray had easily dealt with and you just felt like if we had a player who would really was able to commit Timber and really go at him like he could have asked he could have really may either got him got him uh you know sent off or was able to get at least one cross off he just wasn't able to get any crosses off we've got Solanke in there waiting for a delivery and Johnson just wasn't able to do anything and it was the most frustrating game watching him every time getting to that right hand side doing absolutely nothing and I have to say Son at least Son to be fair on a couple of occasions uh, did Ben White and was mm. able to create something he even created a chance for Kulisevsky yeah. early on so he did little bits but again Son was also like Largely frustrated, frustrating when we got the ball out to him. He didn't. It seemed like he didn't have the confidence a lot of the time to take Ben White on, a, apart from a couple of occasions early on. And I felt like, as well, having Son so far away from goal, literally hugging the touchline. I've always said that you're not going to get the best out of Son playing in that position. Yes, um, he, he like yesterday, there will be a couple of occasions in the game where he will be able to get the better of his fullback. But if he's not creating a chance from those occasions, it's not going to happen. He's not, he's not this relentless winger anymore. So it's only going to happen once or twice a game where I think Son is clever enough to know that at 32 years of age, he's got to pick his moments to go at his fullback. He can't go at them relentlessly because he doesn't have the physicality at 32 to do it. But he can pick his moments. And yesterday he did that, I think, fairly well in the first half because he did it a couple of times but again we're talking about um, um, a situation where Son's coming off the pitch where he hasn't had a shot on goal 
and that should never it's you're, criminal. That should never be the situation because Son's best attribute is is getting his his finishing, getting shots or in and around the penalty box, getting him in that Sonny zone as we say, and getting him shots off. And if we can't man man manipulate the pitch where we're able to get Son in those situations where he's getting shots on goal, then we're never going to see the best out of him. And that's on and the that's manager. That's a massive issue. And that's on that's completely that's, on that's completely on the manager. Like 100%. you've got fullbacks in Pedro Porro and Destiny Odogi who can go on the inside, they can go on the outside, right? Why not just tweak a few things, maybe even in just particular games where you can get Destiny Odogi providing the width on the outside and then you use Sonny in those little pockets on the inside where he comes alive. He can shoot from 30 yards and ping it into the top corner. Like we need to get Son in those areas because that is where he is at his best. And when you've got a player of Son's calibre and Son's quality, you have to use him to his strengths. I think if you're going to play Son off the left, then you have to adjust how your wingers are playing. That's that's the reality. Uh, I think Brent uh, the and way fullbacks. We, the way we use Brendan Johnson is probably correct. I know whatever you want to say about Brendan, that's probably right for him to be a touchline winger, hugging the touchline, mm. getting to the byline and getting cutbacks. That's probably the best use out of Brendan Johnson. So uh, you don't have to change anything there. But when it comes to Sonny, that you know using Sonny as a touchline winger, using him to basically get to the byline and get crosses in, that's no way to use your best player, especially with his best attributes. And I know we've had problems with Son up front in terms of, you know, I don't think Son up front would have been the answer yesterday, but adjusting his position, allowing him to be a bit more central, allowing him to operate in zones where he's able to get shots on goal, where if he can just get a little opening, he can get a shot off and he can be clinical, he can make the difference in those scenarios. Having him stuck out wide, Asking him to take on fullbacks all the time, asking him to just basically get crosses in the box and not getting in positions where he can shoot. That's not going to get the best out of him and it's not going to reap the benefits of, um, of having Son in the team. It's just not going to work, especially against better opposition. Son can be a killer in these games. He can make the difference, but not in that position, not in that... Not, stuck out wide hugging um getting chalk in his boots that's not going to get the best out of son in my opinion so i think that's a that's a problem that and look it's only four games into the season and he'll have time to make these adjustments but i think if he's going to continue to play son in that position i think it's going it's to be frustrating watch i think and you also just need a bit of variety in the play where i i, I do feel the the fullbacks invert just a bit too much like Everyone knows exactly what we're going to do every single time. And if you've got a team like an Arsenal who know how, who who are top the most top defensive team in the in the, in England at the moment over the last year, they know how to defend it and they'll defend it every single time and we saw that yesterday and we we can't seem to fashion real chances consistently against anyone at the moment. And I'm I'm thinking about that and it's like Teams know exactly what we're going to do, exactly how we're going to set up every single game. You've got to have some variation to your play. 